Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. Today I wanted to take the time to reflect on my 2023 inventories. So I've not actually shared the closing numbers of those yet. So to share the closing numbers, to reflect on where we started, where we finished, what happened in the middle, what goals I'd set for myself and if I actually achieved those goals or not. Um, I think it's quite important to take that time to reflect on last year to kind of see what went right or what went wrong so that that can inform my process for setting goals for this year. I know I'm quite late with this because it's near enough, like it's it's over halfway through February, but yeah, I think it's still important to just take that time. So that's what I'm going to do today. If this is your first video of mine, then hi, my name is Roisin. I'm really glad that you clicked in this video. I used to have a problem with overspending and over consuming on beauty products in particular. Over the last number of years I have been tracking my usage, I take inventory of all my products. So I have four inventories, skincare, hair care, perfume and makeup. And over the last number of years I have been on some kind of structured no buy or low buy in an effort to bring those numbers down. So yeah, let's get into looking back at what I did last year. My total skincare inventory was worth $5,155.79 and I had 206 products within that. My average use per year at over the last five years that I have tracked this, for skincare I've used $2,539.90 worth of product and I've used 149.5 products. My main goal for this year was that I wanted to try and bring that skincare inventory down to being worth $3,000 or less. So wanted to theoretically take the fact that the average use was two and a half thousand, take that off the fact that I was starting with sort of just over five thousand and theoretically try and really control what was coming in so that the overall total would end up being less than three thousand. My average added in each year for skincare and skincare is one of those ones I use the most but I think you also get the most skincare samples and skincare gifts and things so it is always quite a high adding in one even though usually I've not actually spent that much money on skincare and this is where this is why I think for me I need to track both values and quantities on my inventories because loads and loads of like the skincare things that come in can add up to quite a lot of money but they can also be a lot of products you know it can be say it could be a thousand dollars but that could be across 30 or 40 products because they'll all be samples or deluxe samples whereas like makeup I'm much more likely to say I brought in a thousand dollars worth of product it would be a lot less product it would maybe be across like 10 to 15 products as opposed to 30 or 40 to make the same value so I do think it's worth tracking both so my average added in over the last five years for skincare has been $1,358.22 worth of products and on average that's been 52 and a quarter products that have come in every single year. So my usage goal was basically $2,655.79. I was going to try and really keep on top of what I was bringing in this year. Using that up would take me to well under the 3000 but it left me with a bit of leeway so that if I did need genuine replacements, um, I could add on a certain amount of replacements. Added to that, I had some quantity goals for certain categories. Cleanser, serum, eye cream, moisturiser, peels and exfoliators, body moisturisers, I wanted to reduce from double figure categories, so they all had 10 or more products in them, to being single figure categories quantity wise. And I also wanted to bring my face masks down. My face mask started at 39 and I was aiming to reduce it by 20. Did I manage that? Closing total for my skincare inventory was $3,869.33. So no, I did not manage. My main goal was to try and get it under the 3,000 and that didn't happen. I used slightly less than I was aiming for. So my usage goal, I was aiming for $2,655.79. I used up $2,491.71 worth of skincare. So my usage was slightly under what I'd wanted it to be. And I added in more than I thought I would. Now I added in less than I averagely do. My average added value every year 
for skincare has been $1,358.22. I added in $1,160.75 worth of product. So I did add in less than I averagely do. I was definitely more on top of it than I have been, but I still added in more than I had intended to. And I think so much of that will have been samples and whatever, rather than things I have actually bought, but it still does all add up. And I didn't declutter a lot of skincare. I don't really like to declutter skincare unless it's gone off and I've reacted to it. So I decluttered $77.50 worth of skincare. So all in all, I used slightly less than planned, added slightly more than planned, and didn't quite hit the goal of getting it under $3,000. Next year, in terms of getting it down, I think last year I did I'd say value goals and I think again for me it needs to be like one year's a value kind of goal that focuses me on the more expensive products and making sure I get my use out of them and in other years it's about the quantity just trying to like make sure I'm using all those minis that maybe wouldn't contribute all that much to a value goal. So this year is definitely going to be a quantity driven goal. In terms of changes that I want to make I think I'm going to unsubscribe from the Liberty Beauty drop this year. Most of those boxes are skincare focused. Usually it's 90% skincare and then a little bit of hair care. So I feel like that's driving up my skincare inventory with things that I wouldn't choose. Like it's a, it's a beauty box. Last year it was technically free because you got the whole value of the £20 a month that you paid in credit for Liberty. They have just announced they are changing that. It's going to be £25 a month going forward. £20 of the credit will still go to your account. So essentially it becomes £60 a year, over and above what it was last year, but you don't get £60 is what they're taking as the cost of the box now. And the last couple haven't been great. I think I'm gonna give them one more just to see if there's a, a significant increase in the quality of the box and how exciting it is after they start technically charging you for it but it would need to be significantly good and I'm not convinced it will be so I think I'm going to be unsubscribing from that this year which will take away quite a few samples that have been getting added in every year so that's kind of my main way that I'm planning to change it because I, I don't really think I bought an excessive amount of skincare last year I was on a no buy last year I bought replacements only so the stuff that came in and kind of bolstered that up wasn't necessarily things I was choosing to bring in. So I think to get on top of that this year, I'm going to unsubscribe from that and see how that affects my numbers. Now, I did set some quantity goals last year, although my overall goal was value focused. I had set sort of individual category quantity goals, as I said. So in terms of how I got on with them, cleanser, I started with 19. I wanted to get it down to nine or less didn't manage that, I got it down to 15. Again, no, I would have used more, but some will have come in, so the overall number hasn't gone down as much as I would have liked. Serum, I did manage. I had 14 when I opened the year and I closed off with nine. So I did get my serums down to being single figures. Eye cream, again, I quite a lot came in this year. So it started at 14 at the start of the year and ended at 12. So didn't go down to single figures, which is definitely something I want to do this year. Moisturizer, nearly, nearly did it. Started at 19, ended at 10. So if I'd used one more, I would have been down to single figures, but we didn't quite manage it. Peels and exfoliators, I started at 12 and I got it down to seven. So I'm really pleased with that. Body moisturizer, which I feel I used loads of last year. Um, I went from 13 at the opening to 12 at the end. So again, obviously quite a few of them came in this year. So I didn't quite do it as well on those category goals. And for face masks, I started at 39 and took it down to 26. So I still got a significant reduction, but I was hoping to bring it down to less than 20. So still a few more face masks than I would like. But again, this year I'm going to be really quantity focused and I want to do a quarterly check-in so that if I have been particularly slow at some point, I will nip that in the bud at the end of that quarter when I realise that and put an emphasis on it more quickly than leaving it right to the end of the year to see how I've done. So that's the other change that I want to make this year is no beauty boxes and quarterly check-ins that are regimented so that I see when I'm not performing as well rather than leaving it to the end of the year. So overall, basically, I didn't really hit my skincare goals. I still used a decent amount. I brought in less than I averagely do, which I'm pleased with, but a few changes definitely need to be made in 2024 to make sure I hit the goals and get 
moving in the way that I want to be moving with it. On to perfume, which is much quicker to discuss. I opened my perfume inventory in 2023 with $4,772.87 worth of product and I had a quantity of 47 items in that inventory. I wanted to use one perfume up, that was my Silent Street perfume that was in my project pan in 2023 and I did manage that. I also used some other things in addition to that. I really wanted to rotate with my perfumes last year and I do feel I did a good job of doing that. Very few of them went untouched for the whole year. I really like project panning but I do sometimes find I then concentrate so much on those items that other things go unloved. So I feel like I had a good year last year that I used quite a few things up but I feel like I still got the use of a lot of things and I feel like that's that's the balance I want to strike. Aiming to do that again this year, there will be a perfume in my project pan and I will be aiming to make reductions on that this year, but I still want to be rotating and getting use of, you know, what I fancy using because I think perfume is just so related to your mood. It's a more difficult one to pan because you're not always feeling a certain way about a certain scent. So yeah, I, am, I definitely will be trying to pan one this year, but... I still want to rotate and I did that last year and I'm happy with what I did last year perfume wise. I used up $239.45 worth of product and I used up 8 products. I added in 2 products worth $96.25 and I decluttered 1 perfume worth $18. So my closing for perfume was $4,611.67 across 40 products. So I saw a reduction in both quantity and value for perfume this year which I'm really happy with and I did that whilst also feeling like I got the use of most of my perfume collection. So really pleased with perfume last year, kind of just want to continue and do a bit more of the same this year with that. The other one that I am pleased with is my hair care inventory. So my hair care opening for 2023 was $1,407 exactly. My average use for hair care for the last number of years has been $392.34 per year and an average of 31 and a quarter items. But I had a really, really good year in 2022. So I knew that it maybe skewed the numbers a little bit because I'd had that quite a dramatic increase. So I wasn't 100% sure what I would achieve this year, but I was hoping to bring it to under a thousand dollars. Basically, I sort of smashed that goal. I was really pleased. So as I say, my average usage on hair care is $392.34. This year, I managed to use up $481.28 worth of product. So, so pleased with the usage. My average added is $119.30. Now I did add in more than usual, I added in $283.59 worth of product. However, I also did a hair care declutter this year. And that's not really something I've done before because I don't feel hair care products really go off as such. But I did take the time this year and kind of had to be honest with myself about certain things that I'd had for ages that there's maybe nothing wrong with them, but I'm clearly not reaching for them in my routine and was I ever going to reach for them? So I did do a big declutter, decluttered 17 items worth $297.17. So that meant that my hair care closed off 2023 at being worth $912.09, so significantly under the $1,000 mark, which I'm really pleased with. And it closed off at exactly 50 items. So I brought that down, it started at 74 and brought it down to 50. So a really significant reduction as well. In the quantity which I'm very very pleased with. I couldn't be happier with hair care. I actually had planned to try and use more because I thought I hadn't really planned on the declutter so I technically didn't use as much as I thought I would need to use to be able to get my average usage, get it down to under a thousand dollars and make an allowance for anything coming in but because I did the declutter it's offset that and I feel good about the declutter. Sometimes I think People can be too quick to declutter things, but I, I feel like the things I decluttered were really things I'd been hanging on to for years at this point that I was just never going to use. So I just, I feel really good. I don't feel like I get rid of anything for the sheer sake of getting rid of stuff. I feel like I really thought through what I was going to get rid of and really kind of faced the truth with myself about whether I was going to use things and stopped 
deluding myself so I feel like I neither decluttered in a wasteful way nor in a way that was too too light-hearted with myself if you know what I mean like I really like you know I feel really good I feel like I decluttered in a really healthy way so very pleased with the hair care so makeup it's always the thing I use least of. Um, I definitely decluttered more last year, which I'm very pleased with overall. So my makeup, I opened it being worth $14,799.56 across 605 items. Now I did have a couple of specific categories that I had quantity goals on, similar to skincare. But my main thing with makeup this year, I did say from the start was I wanted to rotate. And I know my makeup collection is mainly going to go down through decluttering rather than usage because I have got so much makeup that if I do use one thing, it's to the detriment of not using everything else while it sits and goes off. So things are more likely to end up decluttered than they are finished in my makeup collection, um, which I've just kind of had to make my peace with. So we're, we're, we're still on the journey of making peace with that, but I feel like I'm in a much better place mentally with that now than I was and the main thing is to not bring in as much so that at some point when the you know all the stuff that is going to expire expires and is decluttered I've not kind of re I was going to say recluttered that's not the, the word I've not replaced all of that stuff with the same equivalent amount of stuff in the first place so that I've then got the same you know hundred things to wade through whilst they slowly expire if I start with 150 and you know 150 expire but I've brought in 20 then those 20 are much less likely to all expire before I get as much use out of them as I would have if I have to rotate between, between 150 hope that makes sense but I did have a couple of goals first off I'm really trying to get my makeup down to being under 12, worth under $12,000 I did not manage that. I closed off it being worth $13,939.91. So I did get a good reduction and I also reduced from 605 items opening to 564 items. I used up $423.23 worth of product. I used up 22 items which I actually think is quite a lot for makeup. Quite pleased with that. I added in 27 items worth $681.97. So I did add in more than I used and that is kind of average for makeup. However, I, as I said, was on the decluttering this year and I decluttered $981.39 worth of makeup and I decluttered 41 items. So that's really where the going down is coming from is the decluttering. I've technically added in more than I've used, which is not ideal, but I think it is to be expected because it takes so long to use up makeup. So... I think as long as I'm decluttering and getting rid of the the expired stuff then that is overall bringing the collection down in quantity and volume which means more stuff is likely to get used. So it is what it is. Now in terms of the quantity goals I'd say again I had some that I wanted to go from double numbers to single numbers. Uh, primer I opened at 13, I closed at 12 so I didn't manage that one. Foundation I opened at 15 and I actually increased, I closed at 17. However I kind of know that what's happened there is, and it's similar to the, the primers, things have come in, samples have come in, deluxe samples have come in, that does drive the quantity up. I did actually use up quite a few primers so I'm quite happy, although obviously quite a few have come in, it is still an overall reduction in the primer. But I know that I have definitely used a few last year so and I know that what's come in is mainly minis so my overall volume of product is definitely going down. For foundation it's gone up but that is partly because a if you watch my project pan last year I didn't finish the foundation that I worked on all year so I didn't get the reduction of the full size item and I also got quite a few samples in last year so although that quantity has gone up I know it's mainly gone up from samples, it's not that I brought in loads of full size foundations to use and I know that although I didn't finish the foundation in my project pan last year, I know that's going to be finished at some point this year because it's so close to being done. I think this year 
I'll see a really good reduction in foundations. I'm expecting that to be significantly reduced at the end of 2024 versus its 2024 opening number between the samples and between, I feel like for the last few years, the numbers have been low on how many I have used up, but there are some that, there are bottles that are like 80 to 90% used that this year should be able to hopefully get through quite quickly. So I'm not too worried about the, the foundation. Powder, I did actually manage to bring down. I opened with 10, I closed with eight, so pleased with that. Mascara, I brought down from 14 to 10, so I didn't quite get it to single figures, but I did bring it down by four, which I'm pleased about. And then lip balms and primers actually went up, so I opened with 11 and closed with 12. Almost quite similar to foundations though last year, I don't think I used up many lip balms and primers, but I feel like I've got so many that are like this close to being done. So I'm thinking this year will be a fairly significant reduction on lip balms and primers, like those kind of base makeup categories. I think 2024 is going to be a really good year for getting through them and reducing them. So I am very excited about that. Last year was kind of a mixed bag. Hair care and perfume, we hit the goals. Skincare and makeup, not so much. However, I think 2024 is going to be a really good year for getting those two categories under control. Hair care, I'm now at a really good point with. I feel like I'm not too worried about it. I definitely still want to reduce it more, so I will be doing my inventory and I will be setting usage goals for hair care this year. It's not that I'm completely content with it, but I feel like I'm not worried about it anymore. Like, I feel like that just organically is reducing down. And I think by the end of this year, hair care is going to be almost not even worth tracking for me. I will still track it because I feel like if I stop tracking it, it'll grow. But I feel like hair care is just not even going to be a bother to me by the end of this year. And perfume uh, is definitely one I want to keep an eye on. I definitely want to reduce it a little bit more. I got some for Christmas, which will be added in. So the 2024 opening numbers will be higher than the 2023 closing ones were. Um, Cause what I tend to do is close it off just before Christmas. Then I just kind of add all the Christmas stuff in to start fresh with for the next year so they haven't been added into my closing numbers yet and um, so I know that there's a few of them but as I say I did rotate a lot last year so I feel like I could actually probably finish a few perfumes this year or if I don't finish a number of them I know I'll still brought the overall volume of liquid in the collection down if that makes sense. Skincare definitely want to set some goals this year but I think I think it'll be in a good place by the end of this year and makeup, I kind of want to continue with the path I've been on. I want to continue rotating and decluttering, but still also having my project pan. So I am intending to do a project pan this year. And um, I'm going to actually film the intro to that straight after this video, because I am itching to get started with it, to be totally honest. So do make sure you stay tuned for that video. Thank you very much for watching this one. I hope you found it interesting and I will see you in my next video. Bye.